Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Tuesday. Feels like it's the 25th of July. Last week of July here, uh, heading into August. A lot of talk about who's on vacation, who's doing what. I have a feeling everyone's going to be on kind of vacation, but not really in August because everyone is going to have their eyes on the markets, uh, especially from August 15th forward. Why is that? Fed and the ECB are going to raise. I believe uh, Europe's already in a recession, so raising in a recession is never really like the smartest um, strategic play. But maybe Chrissy knows better than I do. Um, and also there's some structural shit in America that is very, very worrying. Uh, and the fact that Jay Powell is going to raise, even though it's just 25, so it's just kind of window dressing, um, could prove to be problematic um, for risk assets and... commodities and I don't know we'll see I mean not gold but I feel like oil probably is going to turn um, somewhere between 80 and 85 uh, but we'll have to see as most of you know I'm famously not the best oil trader let's have a look at this pre FOMC which is tomorrow um, Gold's just dancing by itself here in the middle of the recent range, sort of. We did peak up to 86, 87.37 while I was in Paris. We talked about 1985. Those of you who have been listening know that this is a key level for us. Um, obviously, it held up there one, one more time, three bucks through, so that's a tricky one if you were trying to break trade that. Uh, hopefully, you kept it tight. Uh, but that's still a key level for us. God forbid Powell does not raise tomorrow night. Uh, gold will shoot the moon. Um, so let's keep an eye on that level going forward. 19. No, 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 19. Let's just clean up these charts. Um, 1985. Interesting. Euro did not hold 111. Um, nice break through it. 06 was the break. Uh, looked pretty good. Up to 112, I don't know, 112, 75. But uh, now is ticking lower. You saw the PMIs yesterday out of Europe and out of the UK, especially out of Germany, were absolute shit, horse shit. Um, that's pretty spooky when German services and manufacturing miss by substantial amounts. France also missed. Spain's having a little crisis within their government. Um, and it's given me pause now about the call for Euro to 120. Now I'm beginning to rethink this and be like cheapers um, things look weak in Europe also things look weak in the US but if we do have a risk off moment there'll be a move globally to dollars all the people who bought euros in order to get long European indexes because of their quote unquote value uh, will have to puke um, so I mean we're always looking both sides we do have some conviction plays um, that we have sort of long term and that usually involves cash like whether I hold euros or dollars um, or Swiss francs so it's not really a pure FX trade but it's more of a, an FX move I have taken some euros that I had put into cash and moved them into dollars let's just put it that way because a little bit of a change in heart um, Friday, uh, and then yesterday kind of confirmed it. it was dancing around here. Uh, high was 46 yesterday, low was 62. We have IFO today, German IFO, which normally hasn't been a mover. 
I think 15, 20 years ago was a really big mover, but now nobody cares. Um, let me move the needle a little bit just because of the big miss yesterday. Let's see. IFO is sort of a confidence indicator out of Germany. Let's see what happens there. CPI tomorrow night in Oz. Shit's going to come in lower. Um, how do you trade this? Not super sure. Uh, Aussie held up there. 68.60. We're kind of 100 points lower in the middle of nowhere. I mean, if it's a big miss, just plunk, plunk some out through the lows. Um, I don't mind selling high ones today uh, on a social amount if you want to be frisky going into the number short. Um, so maybe maybe some sales around 68 um, in the Oz. Euro Swiss way too fucking low. Um, traded down to 95.89. We got fucked on this. As Euro was going higher, we really were sure Euro Swiss was going to go higher. That was a terrible, terrible call. This thing went straight lower. Um, this looks like it's capitulation yesterday, 95.89. Um, it was getting close to sort of three, three standard deviations. Three standard deviations yesterday was 95.60. Um, and then late in the day, kind of floated higher in a very Euro-Swiss way. We're looking for a turn and a bottom here. Confirmation of this was through 96.50. Uh, all cards on the table. We are long some dollar Swiss uh, from yesterday. Let's see how that goes. Let's look at Euro-Yen, Sterling-Yen. Euro-Yen just peaked above that... Uh, At 150, I think it's 157. No, no, 158. So we had a bunch of highs: 157.90, 157.99, 157.92, and we just peaked above it on this sort of dovish yen news uh, last week. But looked like false dawn. Um, obviously, this is a key moment: 155. 57. So anyone who is like, yay, ECB is going to raise, BOJ is going to do nothing, let's just be long euro yen. This is their puke point here below this big uh, throbber here, 155.58. So keep an eye on that. We're still 100 points from it. Um, quite interesting. That said, also, um, there will be stops above 158.04. Neither of which are relevant for today, but you just want to keep these levels in mind so you're ready when the party starts. Dollar Norway is of interest to us, which is sort of rare. We never really ever um, get long Dollar Norway uh, on the 10 handle. We're always looking to fade it, but now uh, that has changed just because of this technical setup. Um... You know, if the U.S. are hawkish, let's call it 10, 11, 80 or 10, 12. Looks fairly interesting. Doing some sideways dancing here for eight, nine days. Um, if oil turns, obviously oil's bid to the boots right now. But if oil turns and the U.S. is hawkish, dollar Norway um, might be your might be your horse. Obviously, if the U.S. is super hawkish. That's usually bad for risk. Um, keep an eye on this level. 10, 12, dollar Norway. What else is there? We do not understand this one now. It's 240 big figures from the highs. Um, dollars are. Uh, we still think 20 is going to trade this year. So nothing to do here. you got to wait. For some signals, you gotta wait for some. You gotta wait for this to turn. Um, it's already a hundred big figures below where we thought it might turn, which is around 1860, 1850, 60. So, fairly cautious with this call. 
I guess this I guess this is what you would call hysterically wrong. Um, I think ironically also is the day after on the internet I said how good I was at trading dollars are. Funny, funny how fate can fuck you. Um, anyway, dollars are too low. We're looking, <clears throat> we're looking for a turn. We don't know where it's going to be. Maybe, maybe down here at fifty, seventeen, fifty. Just pulled that out of my ass, but who knows? A uh, little bit of crypto now. We saw. I was in London for uh, for this move here. This was a Congress making some rules on whether coins were equities or whatnot. Popped up to 2028. Now this is the puke. Uh, but you do want to pick up some Ethereum between sort of 1850 and 1750 and just kind of accumulate. So many of you ask me, everyone knows I don't like Bitcoin because I think proof of work is a disgusting consensus mechanism. I mean, it's elegant mathematically, I guess, but it's a disgusting waste of energy. Um, and, you know, proof of stake is just so much simpler and seems equally as robust. Plus, of course, Ethereum, I think, has a multi-use case for Bitcoin. is just basically digital gold. Um, I'm not saying Bitcoin's going away, so don't fucking flood my shit with, like, you know, threats to like rape my dog. Uh, I just think that uh, Ethereum is a better play in the crypto space. Uh, and now we're getting this little puke from the from the stupid news from Washington. Um, but when crypto is puking, you have to buy it. Uh, in, in an accumulative way, not leveraged. Don't be a dumbass. Um, anyway, I've said enough. It's not really much to say today. We got a big back end of this week. It's, it's, it's Fed, ECB, BOJ. Obviously, if the BOJ does something, um, you know, there's going to be chaos. Don't really care too much about Fed and ECB. They're both going to do some sort of. 25 raise and wait and see bullshit call so there's gonna be a lot of noise for both of those but i will be awake for the boj just in case uh the piper starts piping goodbye internet talk to you tomorrow